Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of What's Working in Digital Marketing. Today, I'm speaking with Emma Roloff. She's from Navient and they sell, what would you say, Emma? Enterprise consulting and software, is that right? Yep, that's perfect. That we right on. on helping businesses get more efficient. That's awesome. And I wanted to have you on because one, you're a B2B salesperson and you're an excellent digital marketer. In the last what year, you've really caught the bug here. You've really figured something special out, which is interviewing people in your industry, sort of doing these in-depth interviews. Sometimes they're very quick, high level in terms of here's a definition, here's what this is about. In other cases, you're really getting to know the weeds of robotic process automation and things like that. So tell us a little bit about this strategy and how you think about it as a salesperson. So I think the, the strategy admittedly started off with, I am a salesperson who got trapped inside my house earlier this year yeah. and was looking for different ways to get back into connection with other people, not have this last, you know, at that time, I thought maybe a month or two, but the last year be a time where I wasn't growing my network and learning. And so this was my way of connecting with other people to continue to pursue knowledge and share that knowledge with other people. Um, so that's kind of where it, it, the, the conversations started and why I started going after um, sharing information that way. But ultimately kind of the seed that was in the middle is my approach to sales has always been education driven. Um, and video gives me a really great way to help share to your point, the good word about things like RPA and intelligent automation that might be terms that aren't everyday, you know, coffee table talk in everyone's house like they are in mine. So um, trying to find a time that we could um, carve out to focus on education, even though we didn't get to do the same type of events like we've done every other year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it sounds like it's really an extension of how you think about sales, how you think about your network. And you're saying, let's go digital. How do we do this in the era of COVID? I imagine this is something you're going to continue even after the pandemic. Is that right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. Everything that I was hoping to accomplish on the front end of starting the series has outperformed what my expectation was for it. I've been able to connect with people from literally all over the world with these interviews and gotten different viewpoints on how people in Europe are approaching the same problems that we're, you know, looking to help our customers with, gotten new perspectives and really, um, I think from that perspective for my own professional growth that's amazing, but then also for continuing to educate customers and find a new way to get people engaged with us is um, a really powerful thing as well. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, you're interviewing people who are sometimes their vendors in your space, sometimes their partners. I don't know if you're doing some prospective customers as well. How do you find your guests and then how do you pitch it to them to get them to hop on and record a video with you? So I, to, to your point, I've had kind of guests from all over, from people that are living the implementations of the type of software that we were talking about on the um, beginning of the conversation, to partners that we work with in the software space, or even people that have similar technologies that are looking to share more information about their product. Um, I, when I'm reaching out to people, I'm really looking for people that are sharing relevant and insightful information about the space that I'm in. So a lot of, you know, spending time looking at the hashtags that I use for my videos or looking at other people that are sharing information similar to what I'd like to highlight. Um, and then I usually reach out with either an email or a um, LinkedIn message just to let them know what the series looks like, um, what my goal is, and then if they'd be open to having a conversation about what an interview would look like. Um, and then each one of my interviews, we focus on digital transformation as a, you know, umbrella topic for the series. But then each individual conversation, I am specifically targeting questions that I think would be within their expertise. And we kind of talk through what they'd like to share with their audience, because, you know, in this avenue, not only am I able to share this information with people that I think it would be valuable, hopefully they're getting something of benefit out of being a part of the series as well. So I want to make sure that the series helps highlight what they'd like to share with the world. So we work kind of collaboratively on what the flow of the discussion would look like. And then if they're open to it, we do a recording similar to this, where we really just have a discussion. Um, and then nothing too fancy. I put some subtitles on it and, and share it with the world. 
Yeah. Well, I want to thank you. You inspired me to get started on this. So I want to, I'm just following your footsteps here or trying to. How do you think about sort of um, the, the response or what's the response been like? And then how do you think about the results you've seen so far? I think you've been doing it less than a year. And so I know your sales cycle can be 18 months plus, but what are kind of the early indicators you look at? Um, I think that in terms of success, we are, I'm continuing to see the audience that's interacting with the videos grow, which that's one size success criteria. Um, I, I mentioned the idea that I love to educate. I was once a teacher. So the okay, idea, cool. even if it's not directly leading one-to-one -to, -one to sales, the fact that I'm helping people understand what the future of work would look like is a big success to me. Um, in terms of like direct sales activity, I, you mentioned our sales cycle is long. So I certainly don't have like, this person said they saw my video and now they're here and they're an active customer. But I have been able to use this content to help support conversations that I'm having with customers um, that are existing or prospects that are moving through kind of the investigation cycle of where we're at. Um, we have a couple of people reach out to us in direct correlation with the videos. They're just not current customers at this point because this is a decision for a company to move forward with a software purchase like that. Um, and typically we see it takes a little, you know, a couple months at least for them to decide that we're the right fit for them. Um, so I think from, you know, that direct sales correlation, we haven't seen it quite take off um, to, you know, epic proportions. But um, the, the biggest thing to me is helping people understand our industry. And I would say that's, that goal has been um, continuing to pick up speed. Um, and to me, one thing that's exciting is people are reaching out now to talk to me about doing interviews versus always being mm -hmm. looking for people. Um, so they recognize that this is a platform for them to be able to grow their business or share information or insights that they have um, coming from their direct experience as well. That's awesome. I have, there's no doubt in my mind that you will land business out of this. So just keep plugging away, keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like it gives people a reason to talk to you rather than you have to go ask them for a conversation. So that's great. Any, any lessons learned on the interfacing with people side or on the technology side that you would share with other people who want to try this? One, if you're doing video, make sure that your computer has all the space that it needs for that video or backing uh -huh. it up. Um, I've run into my specific recording desktop platform giving me an error of death in the middle of an interview, um, which was with CIO, gee, they're important people. You don't want to waste their time. So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. lesson number one. I would say the other thing is for anybody that's thinking about doing something, um, I've had a lot of people comment on like, oh, you look so comfortable on your video. Well, if you watch my first video to what I've been doing now, 10 months later, I have a completely different level of comfort, just like everybody does with Zoom meetings. And mm -hmm. um, the more that you can just get out there and do it and start trying, the easier it's going to become for you. And um, can't take it too seriously. There's always the opportunity to cut things out. There's always the opportunity to be human in one of these scenarios. Everybody is used to seeing someone on the other end of the phone that is just a person now, or you know, the screen that's just a person now. And I think that level of authenticity um, is, is good in video too. So even if I say something wrong or um, the conversation goes off on a tangent, I think that those things can be valuable too. And it shows your personality. So don't take it too seriously. You don't have to be perfect to be involved in video. Yeah, that's really great advice. Thank you so much, Emma. And thank you for joining today too. I encourage everybody to check out Emma Rolla from Navient on LinkedIn if you really wanna see how social selling is done. Emma, is there anything else you want to close with or anywhere else you want people to follow or connect with you? Well, I would say, Egan, you've been a part of this journey from Navian's perspective of sharing videos, and you've given some really valuable feedback for us in terms of what types of content to be looking at or questions to be asking ourselves as we're getting ready to set videos. Up. So for anybody that's looking for a little bit of advice, I, I'm <laughs> Egan's tips have worked for me. So <laughs> reach out to him and talk with him bit about your video strategy as well. Right on. Well, thanks so much, Emma. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great day.